Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you to be here uh, to meet Felipe Monroy and Jan Gebert, who are joining us this morning. Um, you can please come and, and please welcome them warmly uh, for this discussion. So we are here this morning to discuss um, the topic filming otherness. Uh, so we are going to um, listen to our two uh, speakers uh, to try and, and think about the issues and challenges uh, faced by uh, directors um, when filming otherness. Uh, Felipe Monroy, um, you come from Bogota, Colombia. Uh, you settled in Switzerland 10 years ago. Uh, you studied uh, cinema in Geneva at the uh, head school. Um, and uh, you've already directed several films. Uh, your latest, uh, Los Fantasmas del Caribe, was presented uh, yesterday as a world premiere uh, in the international competition. Uh, and it's, it's a very personal film since the protagonists are yourself, uh, your parents, your sister, your niece. Uh, so it's a very specific case in terms of filming otherness. Um, and obviously the film is also about the distance between you and them and Colombia. Um, can you please maybe uh, say a few words about your, your film, about the story, for the people who might not have seen it yesterday? Okay. Um, first of all, thank you very much. And I'm really sorry for my English, which is maybe very bad, but I will try my best. Um, okay, the, fi the film, it's, um, I live in Geneva since 10 years ago because for, for, for economical reasons I should uh, get out of Colombia because I wanted to make, uh, my dream was, was to make movies and make cinema and, uh, and uh, unfortunately in Colombia if you want to make studies you have to be rich or otherwise it's very, very complicated, I mean. Why one university can cost around uh, six uh, thousand per semester, which is a lot, mm -hmm. and I'm coming from a really humble family, which my, it's we we can watch in the film. It's, she's an indigenous. Uh, my mother is an indigenous uh, person coming from the jungle, very in the south in, Col in Colombia at 14 in to Bogota, and she's um, manicure. I don't know how to say. Manicure and pedicure and, and whatever. And, um, and my father was a crack, a crack addict who were living in the streets for, for 40 years. So when you are coming from this uh, issue, social issue, um, it's very, very complicated to maybe to dream. And the, in the film, it's, it's, uh, it's something like that. It's OK, the guy went to, went, went to have the opportunity to go. And then, but he have a lot of, a lot of uh, sufferance from inside. Because living in Colombia in the early 80s, I mean, when you get born in Colombia in very early in the early 80s, and uh, and uh, it was the war with Pablo Escobar. I don't know if everybody is advised of, of that, um, and it was very very uh, painful for us because there was uh, car bombings every day, exploding in Bogota, in Medellin, and uh, and in the other regions, and we have this uh, war with the guerrillas, FARC and ELN. And, and I'll, um, an old uh, history of, of, of pain and, and suffer uh, very deep inside that I think so we all Colombians carry on. And, uh, and uh, so the film, it's, it's about how is my personal pains with, uh, related to my family. At the same time, the, the country trying to, to get into the peace process and sign a, a plebiscite. Um, and then, well, the, the family cannot reconciliate it in us, the country, as the image of the country. That's the film about it. And by the way, if you haven't seen uh, Los Fantasmas del Caribe yet, you can see it uh, right after uh, this discussion, actually, at, uh, at 12, uh, just in case you haven't seen it. Um, Jan, thank you to be with us. Um, you come from uh, Czech Republic. Uh, you studied uh, history uh, in, in Prague, and, and you worked as a journalist, too. You've um, directed a film in 2012 uh, called uh, Stone Games, uh, Game, Games. 
games. Games, yeah. yeah. Which um, was dealing with uh, the um, uh, a war monument for the German victims of the annexation of the Sudeten um, before World War II, and, and triggered um, like a, a nationalist outburst. So it already had to do with uh, history and, and politics in a way. And your latest film, When the War Comes, which uh, was presented yesterday uh, as a Swiss premiere, uh, is telling the, the story of a, a young uh, extremist political leader, uh, Peter. Um, and obviously one of the strengths of the film is, is to show this protagonist, which, the, which is very problematic in a way. I mean, um, one of the strengths of the film is that we feel like we're working, we're watching kind of um, um, like a dictator in the making, in a way. Um, can you can you tell us a bit more about the film for those who haven't seen it yet? Yes. <coughs> Good morning. Uh, the, the the film is uh, actually set in Slovakia, uh, and I discovered it like three years ago. Now uh, and. Uh, I just randomly, almost randomly, ran into the information that there was a paramilitary group only like 400 kilometers from my home in Prague. So I was really surprised that in the middle of the EU, you have something that you would never kind of expect there. And moreover, I learned that the organization called Slovensky Branci, Slovak Recruits, is run by a guy that was actually trained uh, in Russia uh, and that uh, he's only a teenager. At the time when I discovered the topic, he was only 19. And uh, the rest of the organization was also very young. They were mostly teenagers too. So uh, I almost immediately realized that there was something very interesting going on. And I started to film it. And the, the film is actually, for, for me, I, I never was kind of interested in paramilitary group uh, groups or uh, military stuff or militarization of the society. Uh, but in this small group, I, I felt that there is that they are something like a mirror of the society, a mirror of what is going on in Europe uh, right now, with uh, the populism and uh, nationalistic tendencies rising. And uh, all of it I saw in this one group, and uh, I started to film it in that way, as a rise of, as you said, uh, a dictator, as a rise of uh, a small totalitarian regime within this small organization. So I tried to really capture the mechanisms of uh, totalitarianism in the film. So the f I think it's like a kind of Orwellian story about children uh, about the children that make their own dictatorship. And uh, I was really struck by their youth and by their ordinary look. Uh, so for, for me, it was like a perfect uh, way to express myself to what is going on in Europe right now. OK, thank you. Um, maybe we're going to start with a, a first clip from your film, uh, Felipe. Uh, I'm very curious to watch the film today. Um, Me too. So <laughs> we'll start with you, and, and soon after we'll watch another clip. Uh, uh, there will be four clips in total, and we are uh, we'll try to obviously keep some time uh, towards the end for your questions. Uh, by the way, Adria is here. She's going to stand up. Uh, you might already know her, probably, uh, and she has a mic for you, so if you have a question, you can obviously, you're welcome to participate in the discussion. Okay, sir. Okay, we'll do our best. So let's watch the first clip. Todos sus amigos son como un parche de fracasados, ¿no? Que se la pasan viviendo a través de los éxitos de sus hijos. No, él no vive a través de los éxitos de sus hijos. 
pues siempre hablan, mis hijos están en Europa, mis hijos están haciendo plata, mis hijos... Sí, pero otro, no nada, yo su otro amigo, mismo su otro nada. amigo talero también, claro, mis hijos son eh, ahogados y son de no sé qué, y de la alta... ¿Para qué decir que no es nada? Son tres personas con, con unas características idénticas. Casi, solamente que talero no es drogadicto. Pero debe tener otro problema. Claro. Un ¿Para estar en la calle? Sí, sí, tiene que estar, tener un problema muy sí. La mujer lo cochoneó y le robó y... Jodió. Que me imagino que eso. Sí, porque todos son el mismo problema. A él también lo dejó la mujer, a mayor la mujer lo dejó y se le fue con otro. ¿A usted la mujer lo dejó? También. ¿A usted lo dejó la mujer? No, yo dejé la mujer, la mujer se fue con otro. Pero porque yo le dejé. Porque ya estaba mamada de correr con usted para todos los centros de rehabilitación habidos y por haber. Dos centros de rehabilitación. No pues es mentiras. Dos centros. Dos centros. La comunidad terapéutica ya me metió un año. Eh, cuando salí, una terapia toda estúpida de... Terapia vaginal, que es lo peor. aguantaba la terapia de la casa, mejor dicho, yo no. Nunca más pude volver a aguantar eso. No era capaz yo de, de, de asumir la vida con responsabilidad, de pensar que tenía unos hijos, que tenía una esposa y que tenía que ser un hombre serio, maduro, íntegro, responsable. Entonces eso no lo tenía yo bien codificado. ¿Tiene refrescos? Por ahí, claro. ¿A cómo son? ¿Quiere bonay? Nadie. ¿Sí que es bonay? Vamos a otro. Es una vida muy... muy cíclica. Las personas... debe ser como un tipo de esto, más o menos así. Que no tiene metas. Yo creo que la... Las personas son diferentes, tienen objetivos, metas, propósitos, logros y, y los cumplen en medio de sus borracheras y en medio de sus orgías y sus tres mujeres y todas esas vainas. Cumplen sus metas, no sé cómo lo harán. Yo no pude ni con una. Ahorita le hago otro, otro, ya ahorita le pongo una cinta y no, no la arreglamos, yo no. Es que tengo que ir hasta, hasta otro lado lejitos ahí, ya, ya es más lejos y ya se acaba el día y ya no hago nada. Pero tengo que hacer aunque sea una carrera a ver cómo quedó. Viven la carrera 123. Sí, señor. So this scene is uh, quite important in the film uh, about the relationship with uh, Jorge, your, your father. Um, you, can you maybe explain, uh, you talked about his uh, addiction problems and in a way you were 
estranged to him and even in a way the rest of your family. So can you tell us about how difficult it was maybe to, to film this estranged family and how you convinced them and especially him to be part of the film? Okay, I, uh, I just imposed myself to him. I said that you abandoned me three, four years ago, <laughs> so you must do it and I don't care. So he just did it and it was, uh, we have this kind of a, a special relationship with my father each time. We, even if we don't live together in my childhood, it's okay. Uh, uh, but we, uh, we have this, this bounce of, of love, which is more powerful than, than everything. And um, for, I doesn't want to, to look in for an, an, an explana explanation, which I think it's gonna be a feedback here. Um, um, I, I wasn't looking for an explanation, but, but more um, more try to to take take on him uh, how his feelings. No, you know, not 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 going at the judgment, but just uh, try to push him to let spring himself, which is uh, most important because. I don't know. Maybe I think so. This, the cinema is not the space to judgment, is and, and it's not to us to judge anyone, but just put it like las cartas sobre la mesa. I don't know how do you say. It. Please help me. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, so I I really uh, he doesn't resist as well, and he's kind of Robert De Niro, a taxi driver or something like that, <laughs> in his way. And uh, I mean, the camera loves him, you know. It's his, with this big expression, and, and you and you can see and feel it, the suffering of, of uh, but also the the, the beautiness and of his uh, his own nature, you know. He's he's a very very unique pe personage, and uh, and I think so. It's, when when I was shot at the first uh, in 2014 in the um, in the scouting locations, I just realized that. Uh, uh, very very quickly, that the camera needs to get very close to him because his face is showing us his life and his sufferings and 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 I th and I thought it, that was the good, the, the good way, but I had a cameraman with me, I didn't feel myself, so which which is going um, to, to give us certain distance and not because if I'm filming my father. Myself or my family, I I thought maybe I, I couldn't have this good distance that you that you need to construct something that is uh, here's your own point of view, but but you you are making a film and and and, and somehow a film is it's as well the distance between between the the subject and you and and. And I think so. This cameraman brings brings me this, and make me see the opportunity to to be more uh, more reacted, more reactive to, to to making questions and thinking, really focusing in 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 in, in, in my job, filmmaker. I, you know what I mean. And if we take this uh, specific sequence, the fact that you shot uh, in a car, was it because you spent a lot of time? Talking in this car while he was driving around, or was was there another um, intent in a way like um, trying to bring you closer? I mean, physically, it's a small car, so you're you're quite close. Well, it's not a small car; it's actually it's a big pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are three. But it feels yes, like really yeah, the camera is really close to him. Yeah. So yes. uh, how did it happen? Why this? I don't. I, he's, he's he's working uh, as. Uh, Move, moving people and the stuffs and I don't know. He just used this this car to eat to to get to earn the the, the, the early bread. I don't know if this is so religious. Or, um, but he's using this car and I and I doesn't want it to. Actually, in 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 my films, I uh, try to let. I try, I try to include myself, me, and in, in, in the cinema, in the life of the people, and it brings them to me. You know what I mean? I think so. This is the the, the, the good position to me. It's where where I feel more more comfortable, uh, because I don't know what to do if I take 
this and put it this. This is like I can do it sometimes, and maybe and you can see some mise en scène, uh, parfois. But um, um, what I I thought it it's it's I'm coming back to this country to make this film. It's up to me to get in touch with him and getting closer to him in his life, not not uh, him to take him out uh, from his own life. And he's working at in, the, in this car, like, I don't know, like, like 14, 16 hours per day. So we spend a lot of, a lot of time together. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, Jan, I would like to ask you maybe uh, more specifically. Uh, so you, you, you told us about how you uh, got aware of this paramilitary uh, group in Slovakia. Um, obviously, uh, one of the first questions that one's asking themselves when they watch the film is, uh, how did you make a connection with the main protagonist? Uh, uh, is it you who contacted him? Uh, how did you convince him? Or how did he uh, probably try also to use you uh, to, to, to get publicity? Yeah, sure. Um. Well, it, it went kind of smoothly at, at, at the beginning. I was kind of surprised. Uh, I, find, I found a guy on, on Facebook because I, uh, at the time when I discovered the topic that there was this group, um, there was only one article circulating about them and that was the only place where I, where I learned the name of the leader. I found him on Facebook and uh, you know I put the name in Facebook and you know d different people popped up but so I, I logically picked up the guy with in a uniform uh, and I wrote him a message and he replied in two days and he, he agreed to meet and uh, it was kind of immediate reaction that I, I, I really understood since the very beginning that this was uh, this, this, this was something that I need to film, that there will be a feature film about them. So I almost immediately uh, proposed to them that they, they, I, I will uh, pitch the, the film to HBO and if they were willing to really get filmed. And uh, they were kind of suspicious at first, but uh, uh, the leader, he really liked the idea that HBO Europe would film him because he would like he would love to be in the company of the Game of Thrones, and uh, he would consider himself like a protagonist, like like uh, the kings of the Game of Thrones. And uh, there was this kind of th there was something that really surprised me. Now uh, these guys, even though I would think that they were really extremist in what they do and very radical. And uh, you would think that they would probably try to hide everything what they do. Uh, uh, the reality was uh, quite the opposite. They were kind of proud of their actions, of their ideology, of everything. Uh, so they were willing to share it. And I was really surprised by their openness. Uh, still, they were very cautious. So at, uh, you know, uh, in the first filmings, I always traveled only myself and the cinematographer, uh, and it took time uh, to put them in the, the microports because uh, they, 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 they had the suspicion that we might work for the police as well, for the secret police. They, there was this paranoia among them. So I kind of convinced them or part of them that we are not policemen and that we don't work with them. And uh, after like a, a couple of months, when we convinced that the leader, uh, the rest followed. So it was one of, actually one of the advantages of like a, a military organization uh, that once you convince the head of the organization, the rest uh, will obey. And uh, I suggested him like actually, I, I was in a very tricky position because uh, I don't have like a positive hero like Felipe. Uh, uh, you know, I, I have this uh, anti-hero, uh, um, a guy that uh, is xenophobic, 
and he represents everything that I don't like. Now, but still, there was something I could connect to. He was, in a way, he was a nice guy. Uh, this was like the most tricky thing about the filming that uh, uh, to keep my uh, integrity really, not to lie to the guy, and uh, to m still make the film I want to do. Um, so it was a very tricky balance, and I'm not sure I succeeded ethically. I'm still not. I don't know, but uh, the thing is that I kind of honestly explained him that I wanted to make a film that would be composed out of uh, solid scenes without any third person talking about them, without any commentary, without any voiceovers. So, and this is really how I always, how, how I imagined, envisioned the film. Uh, so it, it was not that I adjusted uh, the method uh, to what would be acceptable for them. It was the best way to film it for myself. So they were okay with this observational method. Uh, they kind of thought that it would be a truthful image of them. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> mm, I mean like uh, during the process, during the filming, I tried to show them like samples of, of, of the footage, samples of the film, and uh, I did show the final result to them. And uh, still, it was a, a kind of tricky situation that you have this guy that is really nice on one hand, but he's a dictator on the other. And uh, it's, it's really strange, and it, it, on the very human level, it's a very strange experience to learn that uh, even the people that you might despise, uh, the people that you might think that they represent uh, the worst evil, uh, can be nice people as well. And I believe that in normal circumstances, th th these people would do something totally different. So um, I try to connect to that human side of the characters, of, of the protagonist, and uh, when we were talking, it was mostly about technical side of filming, like what would be next, what is good thing to film, what are you planning, uh, so that kind of stuff. I really didn't want to get too deep into friendship or anything that would be close to it, uh, because that would make me feel kind of sick with myself and with with the whole process, yeah. So, so it was like a strange burden, so burden, so, something very, very um, disgusting about uh, filming. Maybe we'll watch um, a clip that uh, is uh, that gives actually a very truthful image of of their group. The driving scene. It, yeah. it looks like we made a concept that we would both uh, show driving scenes. I, I was I was uh, asking myself if you think the fi the film humanized them in a, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, that that that's good question because I really did, that was my intention to humanize fascists because uh, what I believe is that uh, we sh we shouldn't look at those people as uh, something that is far away from us, something that is that we can laugh at, something that is funny something that is like a penguin in a zoo garden, really. It's, it's not like that. It's like uh, the, the problem is so close. It's like if your brother was a fascist. And I think I, I tried to really make the film that way, that you would be able to kind of connect to those people, that you would realize that they're very similar to your neighbor or to your teacher or to your, you know, good friends. Uh, because I, I uh, well, in Central Europe, the situation is 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 that heavy, that uh, normal, orderly citizens are fascists, not because they wear uniforms, but uh, the ideology just is is is, uh, is so popular now. Okay, let's watch it. Oh, 
vamos, vem cá. Ah, ah, então vamos para frente. Isso aí sim. Não ouvi dizer nada. Não ouvi dizer nada também. É, não é assim. Já é perdão. Ah, tu sou a. Não sei se vou pensar em mim todo mal. Não te quer o dólar só. Žiadna kontrola, nič. Beža do lesa, hoci jak. Totálny holubník, bordel. Robia si, čo chcú. Žiadny dozor. Oj, čo ich tu je? To nie je normálne. Pozri sa. Čo je, ty? Ešte kriča. Bordelády, skurvení, prosím. Pozri sa. Je horšie aj cigány. Jeb na to, policajti sú tam. Koho hovna gaflíka! Jeb na to, jeb na to. A ďalšie, a ďalšie, to nemá konca, to už asi celý deň takto chodá. Do večera budeme kamera teda. Oto je chorý. Ako aj nemusel nebolo v Stalingrade. To je imná zviem. Čo? Toto je moc. Ja znova je, to je úplne to mrazí, kamarád. Toto je úplne kolonizácia. Úplne kolonizácia. Ale si zobrať ten samopad. Úplná invazia. Pozor, čo ich ale ide, čo to ide, čo to je národa. Tomu ver, že prejdú ti zraniť. A tomu ver, a pre tých ostrač, čo mi tam videli, tak toto prejde. Čiste stávanie národov. To je moc. Pozor, aký zahalený. Bezpečnosť na riziku je zmoraký. Toto nečí ani z dobrého. To bude vojna v Európe s týmto vrtému. Ja, tá sekvencia je zpášne zpášne. It's, uh, so they accepted, uh, th I mean, they, you said that you, you showed the results and samples of the film as, as you were shooting, so it means that basically they agreed to, for this sequence to be part of the film? Um, uh, well, well, they did not agree, uh, but uh, it's in the film. Uh, they didn't have like a, a right to release erase anything from the film. So this is one of the scenes they did not like and didn't like uh, it to be p part of the film. Uh, but uh, there was this uh, cat and mouse kind of game between me and uh, Peter, the, the main character, because he wanted uh, to be seen in a certain way. Uh, he only to, he o only wanted to show only part of his, you know, organization part of his character uh, basically he wanted to uh, show only his the, the facade uh, and uh, I wanted to go underneath it somehow and uh, it was kind of difficult really cinematographically if you want to make an observation and you still to uh, st still want to dig under the surface. Uh, it's uh, it's you really need to develop a, like stre special strategy, and you need to be uh, at least one or two steps ahead of uh, of the protagonist. So uh, I think this was the case that we just uh, saw saw in this sample. Uh, I had this idea that it would be interesting to put the camera in the, in the, in the in the back of their car and. Uh, to make this image of them driving and talking uh, while they would go to see a refugee camp. And uh, I put the camera over there. We visited uh, a refugee camp in, in South Slovakia and the scene was really, it, it didn't really work out. And I was kind of disappointed, but I left the camera over there. And on the way back, we just uh, got lost because Petra, the main character, uh, he took some turns uh, around to avoid to pay for highway fees and out, out, out of the blue we just uh, uh, we, we just uh, happened to be in Hungary on the border of Austria-Hungary and Slovakia 
and we ran all, really randomly uh, ran into this huge stream of people and the camera was there so in a way we were prepared for this but also we were kind of lucky that uh, we have this scene of them cursing uh, and really showing true colors of them uh, themselves uh, so it was it was always really, really cinematographically what we, we I really needed to realize what I am filming and how to capture it so I would get what I need and not only the part that Peter was willing to show and uh, yeah at, and when they when they watched the film uh, it was like kids watching themselves on TV so they were laughing and then uh, the very next day they said that they would sue me because they they don't like it uh, that you know and two hours later they said that they changed their mind again and that it's okay and now it's not okay again so it's it's really evolving the relationship uh, to me and to the film so I think it would uh, mostly depend on the reaction of the public in Slovakia on the film it's not about the film uh, itself because uh, there is this general misunderstanding of what I would consider acceptable behavior or normal or okay behavior and what they consider now uh, okay behavior like some scenes for me are totally discrediting and uh, they still find it like okay because it's themselves you know doing stuff uh, so I don't think they see the film in the same through the same lens as, as, as most of the people Uh, how do how do people receive the film? You already show it in Slovakia? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. Not in Slovakia. Okay, but you you will. I mean. Yeah, we will. We will in autumn. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. How do you think the people is going to re to react? I don't know. I don't know, but the fact. What are your expect your expectations about it? Mm, I think, well, for for me, the main protagonist in a way is not this Peter, but it's this silent society the film is about the people it's it's not about you know this group and the rest of the society confronting each other it's like about uh, this group and the rest of the society that is being silent so uh, the main protagonist for me is the silent society that allows the group to grow uh, and to become mainstream so it's a kind of, I, th I think it would really show this silence and reveal it to the public. And uh, I think it's not okay to, to for, for I, I think it's, you know, you just can't let it go. If you, if you, you know, the society just can't let it go. The authorities can't let it go so easily that they would uh, see this extremist group just, uh, Having a green light from everybody, from parents, from the police, from from really everybody. Um, so I think this can change a little bit. Uh, it it will probably put a mirror to the society that they should really act and uh, maybe not to be that passive in face of uh, rising fascism in their neighborhood. But in a way, you give. Um the audience, and we'll see how the Slovak audience reacts. Uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of freedom, because as you said, I mean, there is no voiceover, there is no third party explaining. Um, can you explain maybe how you decided for each sequence? Uh, you said that uh, the leader was very interested in like the technical aspects of the shooting. Mm. Was it uh, just um, uh, in a way because he's, he's super egocentric, or is it also about his Propaganda? Did he? Um, well, the leader he wants to be seen as the big uh, person in in big figure in history, uh, not only of Slovakia but uh, of, of of Europe, and uh, mm, I think he believes that the film could uh, be like a monument for for uh, his actions, like a chronicle of a king, something like that. So. Uh, I tried to do it the other way around 
and um, I hope I succeeded. Yeah, I, I think you did. I mean, that is the uh, trick, obviously, in this film, as you said, like uh, filming them, so you're giving them space to yeah. express their ideas. So your place is super tricky because obviously that's not what you want to do. So, And I think what is yeah. great about this film is that there is no ambiguity yeah. about your place uh, when you film him. Mm -hmm. and but that um, must have been very difficult to achieve. Yeah, well, well I think that uh, if you if you if you give them if you if you give these people enough rope, they would hang themselves. You know, like uh, if you, if you really are close enough, sometimes, and I hope I was close enough, uh, you can manage to capture everything you need. So you don't need to explain anything additionally, and. Uh, that the you know scenes uh, are say self-explanatory. Uh, I think they discredited themselves, uh, you know, by the real actions, and you don't need to put there any explicit condemnation, because they always surprised me in the way they went uh, one step further than I expected. I, for example, asked them to now uh, if 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 they would allow me to film. Uh, a reunion, uh, bef you know, uh, a council of of them planning uh, a training, uh, and I thought that this would be an ordinary, you know, reunion, but they surprised me that during this reunion they said that they would uh, abolish election in their organization and that they would be leaders for life, that they would be leaders till the rest of their days. Uh, and that they would ban an e elections. Uh, so th this was a moment that I really didn't understand then why mm -hmm. they were willing to have it filmed because it's really stupid, you know. Well, uh, they, they, in, my, in, in my view, they looked really stupid by, by showing this. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, the, the collaboration really worked because they thought that they were doing nothing wrong and uh, I got what I thought was necessary for the film. Yeah. Felipe, obviously in, in your case during your shooting, the uh, situation was completely different because you knew, um, I mean, because of your personal ties and though you had disagreements with, uh, and that is with the, the uh, your family, and uh, what is very interesting also in the film is the the evolution in a way, because at the beginning you see that you're closer to your mother, and then you kind of reunite uh, with Jorge, with your father, and and um, and there is like an evolution in 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 your relationship uh, to them. We'll discuss it afterwards, maybe with you. With did the relation evolve or did it stay on the same level uh, the whole time? Um, maybe we can watch, because we're, we're kind of running out of time already, but maybe we can watch the clip with uh, your mom in the kitchen, and then we'll keep discussing. Hay que escuchar el 50 y el 50, mijo. Prefiero melodía, melodía es un ahí, ya. W Radio. W no. Ay, pero mío, ¿usted qué es? W es de, w, w es de un calvo burgués. ¿no? ¿Y usted es otro burgués que vive con los burgueses? Nunca. Aquí está. 
Eso es ser homofóbico. Homofóbico es otra cosa. Escucha. Entonces, ¿cómo se llama eso? Bueno, alérgico. Eso se llama ser intransigente. Sí, no, claro, bueno. no lo voy a negar que note que tengo unas posiciones políticas bastante severas y radicales y que no, las, no doy mi brazo a torcer nunca. Yo, por ejemplo, nunca entendí por qué tú votaste dos veces por Uribe. Pero tú me lo has dicho en mil veces. Pero nunca lo he entendido. Vives, vives. Hermano, porque yo no soy política, porque yo simplemente miro una persona que hace cosas y me parecen buenas. Entonces, ¿Y qué le parecía bueno que hacía ese señor? Ni me pudieron convencer los guerrilleros, no me pudo convencer su hermano, ni su Mao Zedong, ni su... nada. Yo ya no estaría contando el cuento. Pasé por todas esas cosas de... de, de, de como los gatos. Pero sí te convenció un hombre que hizo... La revolución que cambió totalmente todo el mundo. ¿Sí me entiende? Y que lo seguirá cambiando no, pese a lo que... No, estoy hablando del presidente Uribe. Dices que no te convenció Mao Zedong, que no te convenció la guerrilla, pero sí te convencieron las, los discursos que tenía este señor para llegar a la presidencia. Los discursos me pudieron convencer, pero, o sea, no, pero no sus hechos, mi hijo. Al principio me parecía simplemente un hombre de familia, un buen padre, un buen... Yo miro eso mucho. Uh -huh. Aunque yo no haya tenido un buen matrimonio, no significa que yo no aprecie un buen matrimonio. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Donde hay orden, donde hay un esposo, donde hay unos hijos, donde hay una mujer que ocupa su lugar. Eso para mí ha sido vital en la vida. Uh -huh. Porque lo heredé de mis padres. Eso fue lo que yo vi. ¿Sí? El hombre se respeta no por llevar un pantalón o por llevar, es simplemente por lo que representa ser un hombre. Un hombre a acabar. Tú vienes y me acusas porque yo voté por un señor que simplemente decía que el país necesitaba tener orden. Y para mí eso es muy importante. Es como una casa. Una casa se conoce bueno. por la limpieza, por el orden... Usted se le olvida que cuando yo salí del monte a esta ciudad, no tenía sino un vestido lleno de manchas de wiki, de plátano, y un par de zapatos plásticos que mis piecitos se tenía que tenerlos así puestos. Para llegar a un puerto que tú acabas de conocer. Uh -huh. Tú no te has preguntado jamás ¿Cómo llegué aquí? ¿Cómo? ¿Quién me ayudó? ¿Qué fue lo que pasó? En una nación donde hay tanta injusticia y tanta cosa, yo podía haber engrosado el cordón de miseria existente en el día de hoy. El pueblo sí necesita despertar, necesita ur con urgencia despertar. Pero no a la manera de los que hacen la guerra. Sean uribistas, santistas, o paramilitares, o guerrilla. Todos están equivocados. Todos. Absolutamente todos. Y sigan buscando la paz por ese medio y van o sea a encontrar solo guerra. que tú no crees en el guerra. proceso de paz? No, en ese proceso de paz yo no creo. ¿Sabe por qué? Ya. Porque la paz verdadera solamente me la da Cristo Jesús. Nadie más me puede dar la paz. Espera el tiempo. Déjenle al tiempo el tiempo. Llegará el momento en que sí se levante. Pero antes vendrá alguien que sí va a decir que tiene la solución para cambiar el mundo. Espérenlo. Pero no se dejen meter los dedos en la boca. Eso sí que es mejor dicho. Y se, bueno, seguimos. Seguimos. Bueno, mis niños, a ver, ¿tú sirves esto? ¿Yo sirvo esto? Voy a traer una fruta para jugo. No, yo tengo para jugo, hijo. Yo tengo, yo tengo aquí. A todas les gusta el hulo, ¿verdad? Sí. ¿Cierto? Ok, entonces. Entonces, pero yo no voy a hablar de juicio. Yo tengo por ahora que hablar del amor y vivir el amor de Dios.
sums up very well your, I think, the dynamic between you two. Uh, um, can you tell us a little bit about maybe this sequence or something more general, yes. maybe about your? Yeah, with my mother, the process was 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 pretty different, and uh, and, uh, and I think so because uh, we, our relationship it's it's very complicated. Actually, we don't talk after the film for for well two years now, and. Um, and we, I had this impression from the beginning that uh, that I can lose her in the process, anytime. So that anytime she's just going to uh, close the door, you know. Um, so this kind of scene, for example, it's one of the last I shoot in my journey in Colombia, because I knew it, that it was very very sensible. And then with the with the film, the process with the, with, with my mother, you can you can. Um, knows that it's uh, they were a very very violent childhood uh, with her and uh, and and uh, that is a lot of pain between uh, she and us i mean my my my, my sister and, and me and but what we are taking really care of uh, of uh, during the shooting it's that wasn't anything wasn't explicit because there is some matters that is only belongs to my family and me, and this is about my privacy, life. But there is another way to 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 take it that make advance the la narration. You know, qui font avancer la narration, uh, and that's important for the for the movie. Otherwise, so so that was the way we 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 try to 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 take this this um, personage. Like my mother was was very very fragile. Relation and it was always walking in, we say it, caminando sobre huevos, um, something like that. And walking uh, on eggs. <laughs> on eggs. Yeah, you had so to be very careful. Very, very careful. Yes. I just wanted to make s sorry. This is very unconventional. But um, about your about your your film, I'm sorry. I have these images. I have a question about your film. <laughs> nice, um, uh, but it's not a question. But just I I just realized that they are very 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 young, and when I and I watch just this 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 film and I'm I'm I think so. Uh, yeah, they have their own this this discourse. But uh, what it's really um, interroge, what questions, yeah. the, the, what is really question to me, and I think so question the, 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 the society, and that's the really important matters of this film of yours. It's that what kind of of uh, of uh, youngs or childhood uh, uh, or childs are we are rising up as a society, because they are very young, and 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 I think so. Uh, this is. Th the responsibility is us is for us as well, and you cannot avoid your own responsibility. I mean, you as a father, as a as a mother, as a as, as a being part of this society, because um, the, what kind of opportunities are you giving to him, to them, so for for them to change this this mentality, you know? And it's make me think that that you were talking it it was a mirror of the society, and it's totally right. I just wanted to say it, to say that that is it's very. Because I I cannot see them uh, uh, through th because I think so that you don't have the judgment of 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 these people, but and I hope so. <laughs> uh, but looking 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 with this distance has made me just made me think what what we are doing as as a society for them for to rise up this kind of uh, of mentalities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. sure sure. Well, and the youth, uh, that was really one of the reasons why I chose them, because uh, <clears throat> I, I felt that they are kind of pure in uh, what they do and authentical and uh, something that cannot really be easily labeled or it doesn't really match all the, you know, the stereotypes that we have about fascists. And th these guys are really strange because uh, they come from all parts of the society. They are poor, they are rich, they are stupid, and they are intelligent too. So it's like a, almost a random sample of the society. And it's not even like I knew the answer why this is, where, where, where is it coming from, or what are, what are the reasons why these people refuge to these kind of uh, 
organizations because uh, it's like really kind of almost everybody, uh, or all, all, all parts of society. But my question about your film is that wh wh whether, it, whether the film uh, improved your relationship with your parents or not? Uh, destroyed the relationship <laughs> with my mother. I mean, the relationship with my mother was already a mess. <laughs> uh -huh. So just uh, may maybe keep us um, more distances because uh, uh, this Uribe, for the people that not are uh, advised uh, in Colombia's matter, is he's uh, uh, from a extreme right and he was the president of uh, for Colombia of Colombia between 2002 and 2010 and for eight years and um, uh, with him to the, with the extreme right the the the, the country becomes uh, paramilitarized by everywhere mm -hmm. and there were a lot of a lot of massacres and and it's the responsible between the paramilitars and the regular military the regular army and uh, and it was very very painful because she's coming from from an indigenous and very poor uh, issue so it was very painful to me to to realize that she's uh, almost this this mentality as well of the right and order and cleanliness and 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 but at what price and I already that's why th this is like one hour shoot and so it, in the scenes like five minutes or something like that so so the, the so that's why I say it's the the this uh, intimi intimacy and the and the the, the the real need words that need to be told in the, in the for the movie. So uh, yes, for me it was uh, it was just confirmation that uh, what I really knew it, but it maybe it wasn't accepted, and I don't want her to de demonize her as, as well because she have mm. her own reasons to 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 believe, and uh, she's she's smart, she's intelligent, and. and she can. She's not that, that like the youngs, you know. She's very smart, so yeah. she she can uh, take her own decisions, and by taking her own decisions, uh, she have to as well assume my position. Um, that she can understand that my position will be retreat, uh, um, getting back to to our relation and our lives mm. because. At some points, as I said in the film, while my, I have my very radical political point of view, um, and, and and then um, she she need to as well understand that that at some points it's there is no reconciliation and it's not you cannot uh, negotiate with some uh, uh, I don't principles I don't know how do you say no, principe okay. the principe de vie. Yep. Uh, we have one last clip to watch. Adria, do we have the time to watch one last clip? And then we'll maybe, I see someone who has a question, maybe we'll give you some opportunities to, to talk. Uh, yeah, okay, let's watch the clip if you want, and then I will go for questions. Okay, thank you. Prečo si sa kurva postavil? Ja ešte dúfam, že to budeš vedieť. On to čo to popísať a voľno robiť? Nie, len to urob, nech to vidí. Sval sa mu niekto? Lebo to nebolo nič na smích, chápeš? Ešte raz, s tým bodákom, Co zbranou chce niekoho zabiť? Nie mala na muchy. E, znovu všetko o tom hovoriť? Či... Nie, stačí mi to ukázať, ja tak si myslím, že to robíš úplne ako kot. Ať to chráni, že ti budú kojiť tebe. Počúvaj ma, od oca. Je to ľudia? Keď to spravíš na chuja. Budú kojiť tebe, maka na rastučky, jak fretky. A to vyvážem, že budú. 
A to vyberieš, že ich zničíme. Rozumieš to? A my sme kolektívne to dáme. Predstav sa, že ti zabili rodičov. Choď do toho. Teraz? Alebo idú makat. Poď sem. A teraz sa kúkaj, čo sa ješ bolo sa dám. Zbrajme dole. Prad seba. Ako sa voláš? Tak. Za Davida! 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 Stick! Zvaňa do ruky! David, poď sem. A bojíš na nich kričo, nech to držia poradné. Bojíš ich napomínať. Pomeň do toho, smelo. Do nich. Za Davida. David, nepočujem. Ten počujek je napomínať, nech to držia poradné. Dobre. David. Dobre. Drž to. Drž to. Držím sa. Vystrite ruky. Ale jak to kontroluješ? Vysvětlí mi. Maybe before talking, do you want to say anything about this uh, specific scene? Or would you rather? Yeah, yeah well, well th this is, um, actually we, we, we filmed this one uh, during the development. Uh, it's uh, uh, a scene from uh, their training that they do every summer and they stay uh, in the forest like for six days and they train uh, days and nights. And it, uh, th this scene particularly, uh, was kind of uh, strong for me because I saw like really bullying naked. It's like, uh, uh, you know, Petr, uh, the leader of the, the group, uh, almost t terrorizing, uh, you know, uh, people that are in the, you know, the, the young members of, of the organization. Um, so this scene is almost like a, a, an initiation uh, ritual of, of uh, a young member. And uh, it's kind of heavy, but it's, you also feel that the, the members <laughs> are kind of, fra you know, are sensitive and fragile at the same time, you know, you see it in their faces or of, 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 of uh, in the face of the guy that is actually punished. Uh, you know, there was something that I almost knew, uh, it's something that, it, it's, it's this moment when, where you feel humiliated and everybody kind of experienced it at certain point, uh, either it was at school or anywhere. You know, so it was this moment that is very extreme and very familiar at the same time. So, uh, and set in this very scary, you know, forest night scene. So that's that's why I kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, there's a question in the audience. Uh, mais je parlais anglais, oui, oui. Um, Yes, uh, first of all, I want to thank the organizers for joining these two films in the same session. I think there are 
too many parallels. I have a question to Jan. It's regarding the aftermath of your film. I mean, it's going to be it, it's going to be its premiere in autumn, and this military leader or this paramilitary leader, better to say, and his people will of course be at the premiere. They will have a forum in some way to talk. I, I, I'm not much concerned about that because I have the German experience in terms of observing what the Alternative for Deutschland made. And the strategy of the media was just not to give them any voice, just to neglect them. And later it changed. They gave them a voice and suddenly they had a way to show themselves and their positions. And I think that your documentary fits in this new strategy in terms of giving them a voice, showing them, but also putting a mirror on them so that they can see themselves for the first time. Mm. Because they want to see them in the media and you give them the chance to do so. And you also give them the chance to, re to reflect upon themselves. And this is a, a, um, a phase in terms of uh, what, what's going to be after the film, after the premiere. So my question is that, what is your strategy after the premiere? Because actually, the film does not end there. I mean, it's, it's going to be a huge thing that is going to move this film. And um, my question is just, have you like plan A, B, C, D for what is going to happen afterwards? And um, this, this question just for you and for Felipe. Wait, um, I, I think that your film shows, yes, this intimacy, but in your mother's, um, I, I'm, I'm really, it's, it's Fantasmas del Caribe, right? It's, it's, it's a film that um, suggested me something totally different. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's too complex, I'm sorry. I, I cannot do this question now. I better give the microphone to someone else. Thank you. Okay, and in the meantime, I will try to answer uh, your question on my phone. Um, well, I don't think that I, um, well, you, you said that um, I gave them a voice. Uh, th that's true. And I think it's a little different situation from uh, from from the from the new space that I you know if if you gave them uh, space in the news like uh, showing you know give them give them space to present uh, their ideology with, uh, without really showing uh, uh, also something that they do not want to show then it would be very dangerous game. But this, this film, I tried to put both things together. And uh, I honestly believe that this is uh, actually in our time the way to uh, show or open problems that you would get as close as possible, uh, show as much context as possible, and uh, you know gather enough materials so people would be able to make their own takeaway, their own judgment about it. And it's kind of difficult, but uh, I think it's uh, more convincing than uh, if you were explaining what to think or uh, confronting the protagonist. It would be like an alibi if I showed up in front of the camera and tried to confront them. I think, uh, I, I, I don't think that this strategy works. So I. Uh, totally relied on strong pictures, strong scenes that would really give you a truthful image of them. Uh, s and uh, sh sh show parts that they that would be also kind of discrediting for them. Uh, so it wouldn't be that superficial and so it wouldn't be a propaganda or uh, advertising of this group. Uh, well, I don't have a strategy, uh, uh, point A, B, C, but what I want to do with, with, with the, um, after the premiere is that I want to um, turn this film into a, a kind of platform to open the debate about this problem in Slovakia. And um, I want, you know, I want to add to each one of uh, the screenings a debate with different people. And one of the, you know, the people that would definitely, that I want them to be there are uh, the members of this organization themselves. 
because it can be dangerous, but uh, also it's 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 a chance to really connect these two worlds in a way because they the, these two worlds, liberals and the, these fascists, uh, I don't think they they meet ever, and uh, this might be a chance to really. Influ you know, to, 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 to change those facets and to confront them and uh, also to, to see them, you know, and to make this kind of experiment. That uh, I, I think um, there is this scary part about them that they are really ordinary and uh, they are humans and they are almost like one of us. And this is very uh, dangerous. This this is very scary, but on the other hand, it gives us some hope that there might be a, a potential for for change. Uh, and I think that you know the society with their reaction uh, can change them, and also the society in face of these images can kind of react and change. So I want to turn it into a, this film into a kind of experimental platform I don't know how it's gonna turn out but definitely it's it's gonna start a debate you know the, uh, the, the Slovakian media are already very curious about the film and um, they're almost very hungry to know every every single detail about it so I think it will resonate and uh, it's it's good to debate about this because uh, it was like a taboo almost in, in the society. Yes, thank you very much, all three of you actually. Um, one question for each. For Jan, my question would be, I mean, you said um, the people were somehow ahead of you as well. They were, you know, you expected A and they did A plus. So my right. question is, in which way do you have the feeling that the camera might be an amplifying instrument <coughs> in terms that basically the group acts or enacts what they think they should be more than what they actually are, even higher to a higher degree. Um, and to Felipe, my question is uh, also just under the title of filming otherness. Um, you film somebody or two people that are very, very close to you, as you say as well. Do you have the feeling you construct them as other? Are they other through the camera, through your film, or do they remain as close? Or what is the relation to other in that sense? Thank you both very much. Are you answer? Well, mm, well, they, they, they were um, basically I'm, I'm not sure if they were, if I expressed myself correctly, uh, that they were one step uh, ahead of me. But uh, I wanted to say that they always, or, or very often, they surprised me by their, uh, by being more radical than I expected. And uh, this radicalism, they did, they, they were not ashamed of it. They didn't try to hide it. They were proud of it. Uh, so. I think that something is very interesting because it would really discredit them. They would think that this is something that uh, would show them as strong leaders. So it's it's really different, you know, they, they have totally different views on, on their actions. For example, there is a scene where uh, uh, Petr, the, the leader, uh, take away names of all the members uh, at the beginning of the training and substitute their names with numbers. And he writes, uh, he, 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 he hands out uh, um, yellow, yellow bands and writes this number on this, uh, yellow bands that is you know, on the shoulder of each soldier. And uh, there is this reminiscence of, uh, to Nazism that is very, very obvious. And I wouldn't be proud of it, but they are. So uh, they were just, uh, they, they just don't see what I see, you know. And uh, maybe I will get back to the previous question. 
maybe if the society would give them uh, some feedback, maybe they would change their mind on their own actions also. But for me, really, the target was not this group as such. Mm, I, I, I saw it more as a product of the society and uh, what I wanted to wake up is this society. And I, I'm not part, I, I, I don't think that this group particularly is a source of something of evil I think they are just really a integral part of the society and uh, what I want to reveal is that the society that tolerates this is sick not only this these guys and uh, yeah that yeah that, I, I don't know if I answered the question did I yeah. <laughs> can I can I can I just ask you, Jan, if you if you spent a lot of time with them without the camera, and if so, did you feel that there was anything different in their behavior when you were filming? Like, would they do m more, uh, in a way, when you were filming? But I don't know if you spent a lot of time without the camera. Mm -hmm. Well, at the beginning, I, I, I went there like for a two, 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 two weekends, maybe, to just observe them. But then I was, then I had this urge that uh, something is escaping, uh, something very precious, and that I should be there with my camera. And uh, each moment when I saw something, I felt pity that I'm not with this, uh, with, with this uh, uh, cinematographer over there. So I very quickly brought them over. And uh, we really did the development uh, with the camera. You know, since the very beginning, since, you know, very, very, very early on, we. We started with the whole crew. So it's been like your relationship between you with the crew and, and the organization was pretty much this from the beginning. Yeah, but well, yeah, and, and, and as I said, it was difficult to find a common ground to talk about, you know, when you're not filming, you need to be sociable sometimes and you need to talk about something and I really didn't, I, it was really difficult for me to find a topic to talk about, you know, so I was talking about, ah, oh, what do you plan next and what do you plan, how will we film this and that and it was kind of stupid, you know, to do it all, uh, all the way <laughs> two years, you know, but yeah, that's the way we communicated. It's kind of strange, you know, to talk technically like engineers of, of Strange, strange kind of communication. I don't know if it's going to improve anyhow. I don't think so. Um, may I? Sorry, Felipe has to okay. answer his question. Sorry. Uh, oui. Um, okay, so the, uh, the, the answer is, uh, is, is yeah, it's make me think to Michel Foucault, um, this question of uh, who's the other. Um, the answer is yes because I think so. This, the, the the film the tricky part was that that I um, stay as um, as a son or brother, but not as a filmmaker. And I think so. The the um, the turning point of this film and what is make him so special it's that you are seeing a filmmaker as well or through the eyes of, of a filmmaker. And the way we construct them, the, the personage, uh, the, the main characters, they are really cinema characters. They are not my mother or my father in the film, but they are, each one of them is are, um, a, a true cinema character with the whole complexity of their, of their lives on, on the whole complexity of their way of thinking political or, or thinking lives or thinking relationships. And I think so. That's that uh, that makes me think that yes, we are really filming the other, and um, and lets them to explain themselves, because it's that's very tricky as well. That when you when when you know someone someone, for you it's like um, it's um, in, en français on dit déjà qui. It's already it's like like you know your father and you know. Why should I put this question? But because you, you have, things. yes, you assume that that they think it's already done or, or it's already there. But for the for when I'm making a movie, I think as well, people who are seeing this movie or, or gonna watch this the, the movie after. 
so that they need bases to construct the pers the the the, um, the the personage as well. So at this point, yes, this this was the. Um, that's why I think in, I, I think yes, we we are th uh, filming the other, because otherwise I I just assume that I know them and and then you don't have the uti uh, the tools to make your own idea about the 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 own the um, each uh, personage. That answer. <laughs> Okay, I'm no. being told that we can have just one question. So, um, I first want to say thank you both of you for these very special films, also with very different subjects. And I want to say I'm doing right now a film um, with one protagonist who is a murderer and part of a mafia um, environment. And I'm very touched by your film, Jan, because of this, my own issue. And before I saw the second uh, clip, I wanted to ask you if these young people are violent now after the second one I know. And I have a question about uh, uh, being respectful towards a protagonist who agrees to be your protagonist and let you film him. And I have the idea that I learned when I have to put the microphone off in my case. So my question is, why do you leave this scene these young people don't like? Because they will react on it. And maybe they are not so differentiated thinking as we are, and there might even be a danger for you. Uh, when I have seen them with their guns, do you ever have the idea they could punish you back somehow? Me, myself? Yes. Well, mm, these are only the trainings. It looks more dangerous than it actually, actually is. Uh, they really are smart enough. This is like the main difference from the probably old school fascists, that they are smart and uh, they have strategy. And uh, they know that they need to stay within the law uh, if they want to grow. Uh, they, they, they want to become mainstream and they are actually achieving it. And in the training, they, they learn to kill, but they never kind of plan to kill or hurt anybody. If I, if I witness that kind of thing, that would be a real ethical issue. But these guys are only talking about, they are talking passively violently. And they are training passively violently, but they do not directly threaten anyone. But the threat is silent and kind of frozen, but it's there, and I think it's it has the same kind of urgency. I want just to to re um, uh, rebound of, of of this question because it's very uh, very good question um, about who's, uh, the editing and putting the scenes. I think so. At what point, even if you are filming a guy you like or you don't, no. uh, if you like or you don't your 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 character, your film has uh, his own life, its own life. And and uh, and you put it in the film what you really needed to put it, even if 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 the persons agree or not. I, I mean, at some point you need to make decisions, and then you have to separate um, to spread yourself by the the the, the relationship you can uh, develop with your your main character, and what the film really needs in being a filmmaker. And I think so. This is very important for all of us, all, all the filmmakers that are mm. here, or people that are in the process to become a filmmaker. You, you, sometimes you need to make a really painful decisions as well. Uh, and, uh, and I think so this is the part of the game and a, a really important one. Yeah. Well, in my case, I couldn't really try to concentrate on making a film and everything else was, uh, everything else was secondary. It could kind of torture me personally and I was like thinking about what would be their reaction and if I'm not unfair by showing this and that, and maybe I will, you know, uh, spoil lives of, 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 of the members, but uh, still I felt that this is something I need to say, that there was this very pragmatic uh, decision that I did, but I don't think it's something to follow, it's just, uh, I, I did it that's what did that way. Uh, well, in my team we do a lot of discussing about this um, issue of respecting your protagonist. and. Unfortunately, my friend had to leave. She's a German cutter, and she said what she is seeing is like the beginning of a maybe a rough group, RAF. 
I, I'm not sure whether you don't uh, make them smaller than they are. It's just my opinion. Like what, what do you mean? Small? In my eyes, that could happen more than you can imagine. And who is going to overtake these young people? Well. Maybe I cannot express myself the right way, but. Well, they are, in my eyes, they are more dangerous than you think. Maybe I cannot yeah, express Yeah, well, I better. think they are dangerous, but I... Mm -hmm. uh, well, basically, they, the, the, the problem that I... Well, they, they might be extremists, and they might look very dangerous because they have this military gear and uh, all that kind of stuff. But uh, ideologically... Uh, they do not say anything that would be more extreme that, than what uh, m most of the mainstream uh, political leaders in Central Europe say. And I think this is much more dangerous than that we, for instance, in Czech Republic, we have a president that is as xenophobic as they are. He doesn't have a gun, he doesn't have a uniform, he has a nice suit, but I think he's way more dangerous. And I think that this, this fact that this ideology made it to the mainstream and made it to the top, that's the main problem. And I don't think the source of the evil are these guys, but that the fact that the, the ideology is pretty much everywhere now. The ideology is the problem, not like the tra military trainings. But I, I understand it, but this is like uh, something like the tip of the iceberg, something that is very exotic and visible. and. Uh, but it's. I, I think we should. Be, I, I think the problem is elsewhere. The source of the problem. Thank you very much. You can see if you haven't yet. You can see when the war comes tonight uh, at the Film Theater Le Capitol uh, at uh, half past six, and you can see Los Fantasmas del Caribe. Actually, you have to go because uh, it's uh, soon uh, at twelve. Um, and uh, I thank you very much. Thank you, Felipe. Thank you, Jan, for your participation. Thank you.